You know, thanking a veteran is great, but let's see what else we could do for that veteran when he or she comes back to our community. Engage them. Say, what can I do for you, young man, young lady? What is your next chapter in life? How can I open the door? How can I make an introduction to the Chamber of Commerce, to that one-stop workplace, to the school in the community? Don't let them walk that path alone. We, veterans and non-veterans alike, know our communities better than nobody else. And it is our job to ensure that we give our veterans an, an equal opportunity to succeed. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. We're here to reinforce our priority to coordinate and increase diversity and inclusion within state government. The Massachusetts economy is growing, but it's clear that not all communities are seeing the same degree of benefits and opportunities. And there's room for state government to improve in both employment and procurement practices to promote diversity and include more women and minorities, veterans, individuals with disabilities. We tried to live up to some of the commitments we made during the course of that campaign. And one of them was that we were going to pick um, sort of best ideas. We weren't going to care where they came from and that we were going to be bipartisan in our approach to governing. And, um, and if you look at the folks we brought in, for example, to serve in our cabinet, it's basically a pretty even split between Democrats, Republicans, and independents. Get out and support some of your local retailers, hospitality, organizations, and restaurants. These are places where if no one shows up and no one buys anything, no one gets paid. I mean, and, and, and this has really been a terrible month for uh, all of our Main Street hospitality, retail, and restaurant businesses. And, uh, and, I, and I, you know, I would urge people to get out there and love their Main Street businesses because um, they, they're really suffering through this. As we all know, opioid addiction is an epidemic. We need to label it. We need to contain it. We need to address it. In Massachusetts, it's impacting individuals, our families, our neighbors, and our friends across the Commonwealth. What I'm going to tell you about the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is he cares deeply about people. He has a huge heart. And for him, it is always about people, which was why it was a privilege for me to come back to the Commonwealth to be his secretary. With respect to this initiative, the Secretary already mentioned one of the things we're going to do is we're going to start making a lot of the data we collect publicly available. Um, there's a lot of information the Department of Public Health collects on a lot of things. And uh, a lot of it would actually be pretty interesting if it ever found its way into the public domain. And um, one of the things Monica and Mary Lou and I have talked about is being a lot more aggressive about taking the data that DPH has that can inform a lot of public conversations and public discussions and making it more available to the public. And we're going to start producing data around um, overdoses on a quarterly basis and eventually, hopefully, on a monthly basis. It'll be county by county at first, and ultimately the goal is to literally be able to do it community by community, which will help people develop a much better understanding about what's really going on community by community around our commonwealth so that we can start making better decisions with respect to how we allocate resources, time, energy, effort, and all the rest. But in order to fix the problems with the MBTA, they must first be diagnosed. This group behind me of national leaders in transportation, infrastructure, and urban planning represent an advisory council that we've put together to spend the next plus or minus 30 days, we're giving them until the end of March, to advise us on the current state of MBTA finances, operations, and governance. 